after I deliver this class, I'm going to check in the comments to see if there are any questions maybe that I can go over. And then I'd love to talk with you guys about your questions. Okay. So five tips to improve your confidence and fluency in English. Let's talk about this first. This video is for intermediate and advanced English learners. These tips can help beginners too, but I work with intermediate students and advanced students. Um, if you're a beginner, you're not going to understand everything I say. You're going to need me to speak slowly and that's not what I do. I speak at a regular pace because this is how English is used in the real world, right? In the real world, people don't slow down for you. So I work with people that are already a little bit more um, advanced and I help get you guys to the next level. So that's the first thing. Um, so if you're watching this like, oh my gosh, I don't understand you, slow down. I can't, I am speaking a little bit slow right now, but I don't wanna slow down even more because then I would be doing a disservice to the more advanced um, students who are watching this video, okay? So the first tip that I wanna give you guys to really improve your fluency is to focus on fixed phrases, okay? Fixed phrases. So rather than just learning like individual vocabulary words, rather than studying lists of words or phrasal verbs or just individual little chunks of English, um, like just regular words, or instead of focusing so much on grammar, I want you to focus on fixed phrases because this is going to help you sound so much more like a native speaker. So for example, a fi a f <laughs> I can't talk, a fixed phrase is something like, I wish I could, I wish I could, or wouldn't it be nice if, wouldn't it be nice if, okay? Because when you hear that, I, you know, native speakers, we say the same phrases over and over and over again. And when you learn our phrases and you can figure out like in which context and which situation they belong, you're going to know when to use them. You're going to sound like a native speaker. You might not even know the grammatical structure. You might not even know what it's called, but you just know it sounds right. That's when you're really starting to get fluent in English, when you can just hear something and go, no, that sounds wrong, okay? You don't even have to know why it's wrong. And you know what? Native speakers, okay? If, if they don't study English, for example, my siblings that are native English speakers, if they don't study English, they can hear something and go, mm, no, that sounds wrong. They just know that it sounds wrong. Maybe they can't explain the grammar. They can't explain everything. They just know that it sounds wrong, okay? So this is what you want to go after. You don't have to become an expert in grammar, okay? You don't have to become an expert in, um, you know, putting words together to make sentences and knowing exactly how to break them down and what the definition of everything is. You're not a linguist, okay? That's the job of a linguist, unless you are a linguist. If you are a linguist or if you are um, an English teacher, then yeah, you, you need to know like word origins, how to put words together. You need to know all the fancy vocabulary. But if you're somebody that works in accounting, if you're a lawyer, if you're a nurse, if you are a secretary, whatever your job is, if, if you don't have to teach English to other people, you don't need to know all these fancy phrases, okay? Like, um, uh, what was I gonna say? Fancy phrase, like you don't need to know all the grammatical structures and what they're called. You just need to know what sounds right. Obviously, you do need to study things a little bit more if you're going to be taking a test like the IELTS or the TOEFL, right? Because they're going to ask you specific questions. But they're just testing your fluency. In the real world, when you go to work, your boss isn't going to say, hey, you know, I want you to write this letter to the client and make sure you use the past perfect tense. You know, they're not going to do that. So keep that in mind, you guys. Focus on fixed phrases, learning fixed phrases in English like... Um, I wish I could, wouldn't it be nice if, um, one day I'd love to, I'd love to, like that's a phrase, right? So you guys, if you follow me, which a lot of you guys, you're seeing me for, for the first time, but that's a phrase I use all the time. That's a fixed phrase. I'd love to. That's I would love to. I would love to, okay? And we contract the I would. We say I'd love to. I'd love to see you tomorrow. I'd love to go with you to the concert. I'd love to, okay? You don't have to know what gr the grammatical like name and term is for that phrase. Just know how to say it, okay? And you're gonna start sounding like a native speaker. Now, here's why I tell you guys this tip, okay? I tell it to you because 
you know, I said in the beginning of the, of this video that I learned Spanish, I spent 10 years trying to become fluent in Spanish. Um, and it didn't work because I was focusing on grammar, vocabulary. I was focusing on all these like academic things. I wasn't speaking it. I wasn't focusing on fixed phrases. I wasn't practicing um, with native speakers. And so it took me a long time to get fluent because none of those traditional methods of studying the language worked, okay? It just made me more knowledgeable about Spanish, but I couldn't use Spanish in the real world. So, and then I went to Argentina. I studied abroad, as I told you guys earlier. I met my husband and I lived there for four years. And that is where I became fluent because I use Spanish every day with native speakers. Now, before you start thinking, oh no, this means I have to move to an English speaking country in order to get fluent. No, you don't. No, you can use the internet to meet people.